whatever this, this, the obstacle arises, you bring this penetrating s stillness to it. You can also look into manifesting, but then the question is, what is it that wants to manifest through this form? It's no longer, this is what I want, the sur surface I. What is it that wants to manifest through this form? Very different. And you may, you may not know that immediately. There may be a time period when you don't know exactly what to do with your so-called life, which is not yours just a conventional way of speaking, there may be, a, for a while, you don't know what to do with your life, and so you just, just there, being as still as possible, do your whatever activity you're already doing, and, but bring stillness into it, presence into it. And then at some point, either the realization of what it is that you need to do, that wants to be done through you, comes either from the outside, somebody, tells you something, ah, oh. or you wake up one morning and ah, oh, this is what I have to do. And then you start taking action. Always making sure you're not so attached to the outcome that you think you're, it's more important than the present moment. An action can become egoic when you lose yourself, it becomes egoic when you lose yourself in the doing. And a good sign or good criterion is when something happens to that is against your, seems to be an obstacle, a person or situation. Say, I want to do this or achieve that, and suddenly somebody says, no, you can't do that. No, they won't allow you to do that. No. Or, some, or a situation becomes a challenge, it's difficult, it's blocked, you want to go. Somebody says, no, you, you're not qualified to do that, you shouldn't do that, it's not allowed, whatever. You, you need this and that which you don't have to achieve. Obstacles come all the time. If you get upset, that means the ego is back in the doing when obstacles come. And you go, <gasps> If you're not upset, you're still present and you look at whatever the obstacle is, very, and you look at it with this penetrating gaze of presence, which is stillness also. You look at whatever this, this, the obstacle arises, you bring this penetrating stillness to it, and that is like a light shines on it. And then that dissolves the obstacle, or it shows you a way around it. That's the power of consciousness. It always happens. Either it shows you how to get around it, or it shows you how to use the very force of the obstacle, and you turn it around. If the obstacle is wanting to go this way, and you go with it for... I'm just demonstrating now. Something counteracts what you want to do, it's coming this way, you want to go that way, but you don't meet it head on and start complaining, saying, no, this shouldn't be happening. No. Perhaps you go with it for a little while, and you go, and then you turn it around. And the very power that was against you then works for you, and you achieve your goal through that. It happens, and this is the wisdom that comes with non-resistance. So whenever you go into this conscious doing, resistance always pulls you back into unconscious doing. It can easily happen because it's an old habit pattern, unconscious doing. Inner resistance to whatever arises in the present moment pulls you back Inner resistance is some form of negativity, some form of complaining, some form of uh, fear, uh, aggression, anger. 
And this is important because whenever you complain about what somebody else does, that you're already beginning to fall into that trap of unconsciousness. And of course, you, yes, you meet lots of people who are still trapped in ego and they may not like what you do. But just no judgment. Just look at what the city, they say this, they want that, you want that. And they don't say, oh, they're dreadful. I know what he wants. He wants to deceive me. He, and he always does that. He wants to go. Just, no, just clear. This is the city. This is what he says he wants. This is where I want to go. And see. Okay. Never, no, never any judgment of a person or situation. Just clear seeing, clear facing. This is the power, it's like a light beam of consciousness. It falls onto, illuminates that, that, that situation, that moment, that, that person. That's the power of consciousness. No resistance. Jesus already talked about the power of non-resistance. And that the moment resistance comes, you're drawn back into identification with form. Protection, resistance, fighting. It's, it's a, are you going to succeed all the time in this? No, it's a, it's a shift from a way of doing that has been with us for thousands of years and a new way of doing that is only arising now. So you are transitional beings between the old consciousness and the new, and don't judge yourself if you fall back occasionally into the old consciousness, but you will quickly know it. How will you know it? You begin to suffer. <laughs> you get upset. You get upset about situations. You get upset about people. You get upset about what somebody said. You get upset about what somebody should have said but didn't. You get upset about what somebody did or failed to do. Oh, there's a sign that you've fallen back. Beautiful line in the Course in Miracles. I am never upset for the reason I think. Now, Upset is a generic term. Could be any, 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 in any way that you're yeah, out of alignment with isness. There's a disagreement with the isness of the present moment, and then you become upset. Now, many people are upset a lot of the time, but they don't realize they are upset. And if you talk to them and say, "Why are you upset?" they say, "I'm not upset. I'm just bloody angry." <laughs> Oh, I'm not upset, I'm deeply hurt because he didn't invite me to his birthday party. Deeply hurt. <laughs> not upset. <laughs> I'm never upset for the reason I think. Now, the deeper meaning of this, of course, is you are upset because you have lost Awareness of being, your essence, identity. And the reason you think is superficial. If it's not, if when you lose connectedness with being, just wait a few minutes and something or somebody will upset you. <laughs> I'm, and so, if we believe that the, that which seems to cause the upset is the actual cause, this is not the case. These are interchangeable, could be anything, and it will. <laughs> so you'll be upset many times every day <laughs> by other people, by situations, by the slightest things or the biggest things, upset, upset, upset by the entire world is so frustrating. <laughs> I'm never, so that's a little sign then. If you're upset, 
you want to go somewhere, but, but people are not cooperative. Situations are not cooperative. <laughs> and you can talk to yourself. <laughs> so that's a good sign then. You can use, also shows you to what extent the ego is active in you because what's upset is not you, it's the ego in you. The ego is the erroneous identification with form, a false sense of I, uh, which wanted something to make itself feel <coughs> more at ease or bigger or more important or whatever and is frustrated in its aims. Well. Well, that's a good, then it's like a little, if you had a little, it's almost like having a little technical device on your arm that tells you whenever your ego comes back, it goes bleep, 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 bleep. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need that. Well, if, you, if somebody here is a technical wizard and is going to invent it, it's fine. <clears throat> But you don't need that because all you need is to know if you are upset or not in everyday life. Now for many walking egos, upset is their normal state. They might not even know it anymore because they're upset virtually all the time. And just waiting for some other thing to happen to explain why they are upset again. But of course, there's the underlying dissatisfaction is always there. Foundation then is stillness. That's the return journey. So can we be then simultaneously in the return journey to the source of all life? spiritual dimension, God, stillness, and still be active in this world. And then if we are that, what we then do in this world becomes empowered by the intelligence that emanates from the source. And then the source creates through you. No longer, the power of the source is then no longer distorted by the ego and its power greatly diminished to a trickle. So the source is like light, you can say sunlight wanting to shine through fully. But for a long time it's become reduced to, to a tiny little hole and there's a little bit of light coming through just to keep you going. <laughs> and now this, it can come through and use you. When we use language, we always create duality. So when I say it uses you, it's not quite true because you are it. But language does that. It uses, let's then, once we know that it's okay, we can use those words. It uses you then. Now, what exactly it wants, I don't know. Perhaps it simply wants to create beauty or uh, forms that are alive and joyful and enjoy that. It's enjoyed the drama of, of for thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, it's enjoyed the drama of people cutting each other to pieces and eating each other up. It's enjoyed the drama. The movie is changing now. And perhaps it's creating a much more pleasant movie. And who knows what is in store for us. I never, I cannot predict the future. I'm not particularly interested. This the present moment is wonderful enough. But something is, there's a change happening. And of course there comes a, comes a point in your life when you may not, this, the source may become much more important than whatever you do. So 
you reach a time when you say, well, I've done this and that, and it's been wonderful. And then all you are, you are just still and you emanate that stillness. And even then you affect the world around you without any doing. If you, if you just be, be there and whoever you come into contact with, there's some almost, one could say, transmission, even if they don't notice it. You can do that, and some humans perhaps will mostly live in that way. How much doing you do, how much varies from form to form, person to person. Some will be very active and conscious into conscious doing and create and, and enjoy the creation. And others may do relatively little or may just continue to do what they're doing already, but whatever they are doing will be a vehicle for consciousness or stillness that flows into it, this power, this beautiful energy that flows. It could be even a person who just gives information. Let's say you work at an airport and you give information to people. <laughs> and maybe you stay there and then everybody who comes to ask, where's gate number 16? You say, well, you go that way and it's only about a three minute walk. And there were not only the words, there was a transmission of stillness with the words. Not in the sense that I am going to transmit stillness, no. <laughs> it, it happens because you let go of the sense of doing, of I do. It happens. And the person, this one traditional word for it is blessing. The person goes away being blessed with that energy. And so, beautiful. So, so what you do really is secondary. Some may do great things. Others may do things that look on the surface not so significant. And ultimately, what you do is secondary. But how you do it is primary. When the how means the consciousness that flows into what you do.